Last night's contentious CNN debate ended with this snub heard around the world. Take a look. And good evening. I'm Anderson Cooper live from the Democratic debate in Des Moines, Iowa. This was it. The last time Americans will hear the Democratic candidates all on stage together, hearing them debate before the first votes are cast 20 days from now. Caucuses in 20 days. Six candidates on stage, laser focus on policy, Iran. All right. So, look, here we have what seemed to be a heated discussion between Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. Uh, what was said, we don't know. Right. But look, the fact is that she refused to shake his hand following the debate. And that, to me, seems to not be a very good sign, especially considering that Warren's campaign previous to the debate actually wanted to de-escalate its situation with Bernie Sanders. Uh, now, as according to BuzzFeed, one of Warren's campaign officials advised supporters in a large pro-Warren group chat on Twitter that their next step would be to dial back the confrontation happening with Bernie Sanders. Uh, the Let's see. It states, uh, the message does, where we go from here, our goal is de-escalation de and focusing on our shared goals. The staffer wrote to the group according to screenshots of the chat. So, look, that's a good goal. Uh, I would have liked a de-escalation, but it appears that did not happen. Uh, so during the, the debate, of course, we saw CNN uh, bringing up their own poorly sourced hit piece that insinuated that Bernie Sanders uh, was some sort of sexist who didn't believe that women could actually win an election, right? Uh, despite Bernie Sanders urging Warren to run back in 2015 uh, and telling Hillary Clinton, of course, that she could beat Trump and become president. A lot of people forget how hard Bernie Sanders, and some people want to forget how hard Bernie Sanders actually fought for Hillary Clinton to get elected, how much he actually tried to get his, some, a lot of his supporters who actually did follow his advice to support and vote for Hillary Clinton. In fact, Hillary Clinton had twice as much support uh, uh, from Sanders supporters as Barack Obama had from Hillary Clinton supporters back in 2008. So, all right. Now, going back, right, even so far back as to 1987, where Bernie Sanders uh, was telling um, young girls uh, in a classroom that they, too, could become president. In fact, I've got that video. Take a look. One other woman governor, though often mayor of San Francisco, is a woman, and there are many women mayors, but not enough. And one of the very important things, and I hope that all the girls in this class understand, that you, just as much as the boys, have a right to become president. There's not been a woman president, or there was a woman who was giving thought to running for president this time, a, a from Colorado, a woman named Representative Schroeder gave some thought. So I hope that the girls will think that they have the right to be involved in politics quite as much as the boys. It's beginning to change, but it's not changing fast enough. It's beginning to change, but it's not changing fast enough. Women could absolutely be president in the United States. I mean, it, it's, it's pretty clear. You, you saw it with your own eyes. All the way back in 1987. 1988, Bernie Sanders was... Uh, on board of Jesse Jackson's campaign, he said that, yes, a woman, of course, could be president of the United States. So it's complete fabrication, a complete lie from, and, and I hate using this term, fake news CNN. Uh, so now we can tell that they, of course, had it out for Bernie Sanders. Uh, they also framed their questions in very ridiculous ways, uh, right-wing framing. Uh, but the thing that they brought up that inflamed Sanders supporters the most uh, is when they asked this. You're saying that you never told Senator Warren that a woman could not win the election. That is correct. Senator Warren, what did you think when Senator Sand Sanders told you a woman could not win the election? <laughs> I disagreed. Again, that's not at all true. She said that basically that Bernie Sanders was lying when he denied saying that. Uh, he didn't say, it. as far as we know, that a woman couldn't win. So either Elizabeth Warren is lying or Bernie Sanders is lying. Or at the very least, Elizabeth Warren misinterpreted what Bernie Sanders was trying to say. I, of course, was not in the room. There's Odie in the room, except for the two of them. But Sanders, I, look, from his explanation, he basically was doing what a good friend would do. Warning his friend, who plans to run for president, 
that Trump will attack her in the most vicious ways. Sexist attacks. He was, again, doing what any good friend would do. Hey, you know you're going to, you know, Trump's going to say this about you and they're going to come after you with this. Uh, and so you just, you got to be ready, right? Uh, and so look to prepare your friend for that onslaught of horribleness is what, again, any good friend would do, right? Uh, but look, and here's the other thing about that. And I should, I, it should be obvious, right? But Donald Trump does not play nice, okay? Like Bernie plays nice. I, and, I, and I know that that makes uh, people's heads explode. In the, what, are you, what are you talking about? Bernie Sanders is vicious. Oh, my God. And his supporters are terrible. No, no. You haven't seen vicious, right? No, vicious is Donald Trump who does not care what he says. He will go after you on anything. And so Trump will not play nice to Elizabeth Warren. And I don't think, I don't know if she's ready for that. Maybe she is, maybe she isn't. Who knows, right? So now the other thing is I'm wondering, she sat on this for two years. Assuming that she's right, assuming we believe her, why bring it up now? Well, I mean, look, there's a good chance the script, uh, the whole uh, script kerfuffle, right? Uh, and that's an interesting word, kerfuffle. That's what precipitated this. Now, let me explain that whole uh, situation. So now there's a script uh, that was released on Friday. This is Bernie Sanders' campaign script that people who were you know, canvassing for Bernie uh, would say to Elizabeth Warren supporters, right? Uh, now, in it, the script said that Warren supporters were more affluent and more highly educated than Bernie Sanders supporters. Also less diverse, right? So that comes out. And Bernie Sanders says, well, we, I didn't approve that personally. The campaign later on says, well, the campaign did. It was on official campaign letterhead. But a day later, it comes out on Friday. They killed it on Saturday saying that it was sloppy writing. Now, Warren, uh, uh, I'm sorry, um, Politico reports that, I believe, on Saturday or Sunday. Uh, and then on Monday, Elizabeth Warren says, well, I can't believe Bernie Sanders is trashing. Well, OK. Let me read you that script, right? Uh, it says, and you, can, and you can see for yourself whether or not this is trashing Elizabeth Warren, right? Quote, I like Elizabeth Warren. That's a weird way to start out trashing. In fact, she's my second choice, but here's my concern about her. And it's trying to make a distinction between those two candidates. People who support her are highly educated, more affluent people who are going to show up and vote Democratic no matter what. So she's bringing no new bases into the Democratic Party. We need to turn out disaffected working class voters if we are going to beat Trump. Now, look, that's a fairly good message. Um, and look, the polling back set up. Warren does have a lot of wealthy, college-educated liberals supporting her. Some who are even, you know, consider themselves very liberal. Okay. Uh, now, she does struggle a bit with African-Americans. Though not nearly as much, of course, as uh, Mayor Pete Buttigieg and more working class uh, voters, more working class people, as well as younger people support Bernie Sanders, not to mention people in uh, more active uh, military uh, people support Bernie Sanders as well. So there's not as much of an overlap as the media previously reported between Sanders and Warren, their bases, uh, which is why you've seen Warren tack a bit to the center because it turns out those wealthy college-educated uh, liberals are slightly more moderate. All right. Uh, now, pointing that out, it, it's, not a, it's not a smear. It's a factual observation. But here's the thing. That's actually kind of embarrassing to Elizabeth Warren's campaign. Because that would be admitting that she had the same problem as Hillary Clinton. Not attracting working-class people, working-class voters of all different demographics. Now, Here's who, do, who does best with African-Americans. Right now, Joe Biden. Joe Biden is leading with African-American voters, especially older ones. Uh, now, Bernie Sanders, of course, has the second most amount of African-American support, generally younger, right? Uh, we saw what happened with Hillary Clinton. And this is the problem that could affect Elizabeth Warren if she becomes the nominee, Hillary Clinton could not get the Obama coalition together. There was not as, lot, as much enthusiasm for her uh, as, as there was uh, Obama. 
And so, look, that is a problem for any campaign, especially when you're going against somebody who will probably try to run another populist campaign, Donald Trump. So Warren, of course, is not happy about this. Uh, and so I believe, and this is my speculation, that she pulls this accusation out of a conversation that Bernie Sanders and her had two years ago and used it to weaponize the uh, identity against Bernie Sanders. That's what I believe. And this has, by the way, DC consultant class written all over it. I do not think that this is Elizabeth Warren's idea. These are Obama Clinton staffers telling her, do it, Liz, just do it. He smeared you as the elitist. Get him. Here's how to get him with sexism. I mean, again, total speculation, right? And But the worst thing is, and the thing that we can't speculate on because we know what happened, is that she went with it. She actually did it. She pulled the trigger on that. Uh, and still, Bernie Sanders, he reached out and was rebuffed. And so that's what led Bernie Sanders to storm off uh, stage. You don't have necessarily have to hear the exchange between them to know that it was not friendly. And so, and look, you... I, I looked at it and and you could see kind of the pain in his face, right? And I know it's I know it's kind of weird and hokey to go in, in that direction, but like, no, I think I think it feels like a betrayal. Ouch. Uh, and so look, Bernie Sanders has never said himself has never said anything negative against Elizabeth Warren, and yet here we are, right? And a lot of it I think is due to the media, where you had Politico. And CNN basically doing everything that they can to divide Sanders and Warren voters. And so, and look, what makes me the most upset about this is why on that stage, she did not say, hold on, I don't think Bernie Sanders is sexist at all. Because that's the, the intimation, right? That's what, I mean, was alleged by the whole statement of, well, Bernie doesn't think a woman could win the presidency. Of course, that would mean that he is a sexist if he doesn't believe that. She didn't stand up and say, I don't believe Bernie Sanders is sexist at all. Uh, and, you know, he didn't say this or maybe he did say this in the context of Donald Trump and his attacks. I disagree with that. But she didn't. She didn't do that. And so, look, this is how the media successfully divided them. And this is what they've been looking for all the time. And they're doing it in order to give Joe Biden a pass. And again, look what happened in that debate. If you watch the whole thing, you could tell that Joe Biden was barely even touched by the moderators. Not at all. He was tweaked on the Iraq vote, but CNN itself, they were gunning for Bernie Sanders. And we know that we have eyes, we can see it. I've never seen anything so incredibly biased and stacked in my life. And if you're wondering where we go from here, well, let's just say, and I know tr Twitter isn't real life, uh, but man, you go there today, hashtag never Warren, hashtag never Bernie, both trending in the top spots. Not good. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm, messing around with view counts, etc. We're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYTNation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron, patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.